my name is Maslina Othman. I am from Malaysia, uh, and <laughs> and a U.S. permanent resident. I have been living in the USA for 20 years, 15 years in Missouri, five years in the Bay. Um, I first come to the U.S. for uh, for education. Uh, combined master and PhD, I published eight papers, two of them. Uh, I was first author and it was published prior to my PhD defense. So I am, then after PhD, I joined industry. I am fortunate to work with big companies. Uh, my first company was with MEMC, uh, now called Sun Edison. At that time, maybe now too, Sun Edison Semi. Uh, it's top three in the world, uh, producing wafer for semiconductors. And then after that, I joined Total, oil and gas company, uh, the French company, which is top five in the world. And I was seconded to Sun Power. Then I joined First Solar. That was my previous. Uh, I have traveled to 13 different countries, 24 facilities, manufacturing, and R&D lab. Uh, and my highlights is, a company transfer R&D product, it didn't work. I come in, I reorganize the lab, and with that, I improved the quality from 20% to 95%. I reduced the cycle time, I reduced the lab operation hours, and I increased throughput without having a headcount. So this is a win-win situation between manufacturing and R&D. So today, I want to give a talk about silicon in solar and challenges in transferring R&D product or R&D process into manufacturing, and also what women experience being in clean tech workforce. So everyone knows solar panel. You've seen in previous presentation, the one that you put on the rooftop, parking lot, the big farm, utilities, that is downstream. I want to bring you upstream. So it started with polysilicon. Then you have silicon crystal growth, ingot cutting, ingot shaping, slicing the ingot, creating the wafer. Then you have the solar cells device. Then towards the end, the installation. So let's, so for uh, solar cells device, the major part in solar cell device is silicon. Depending on different silic silicon cell, I'm sorry, de depending on different solar cells technology, then you will have different, a unique architecture on top of silicon. So the major bulk of the film is silicon. So let's talk about silicon, how it's been created. So first you have a polysilicon charges put inside the crucible and then you melt the polysilicon at high temperature, and then you dip a seed, and then do a seeding, necking, and shouldering process. Then after that, you keep growing slowly and grow the entire body of silicon. And then after that, you grow the tail, make an end cone and cooling. So during this process of growing the silicon, there are so many defects can be incorporated inside the silicon itself. So if we cut the silicon crystal, the cross section, from top all the way to tail, you will be able to see a different defect formation throughout the crystal length. Not all defect is bad. Some of defect is harmless. Actually, some of defect can be beneficial for solar cells. It possibly could boost the solar cells performance. But the interaction of the defect and the solar cells at right now is not well understood yet. So it is critical to create an R&D characterization platform where when there is process issues occurred at the solar cell company, then we can generate the data and then triggers it back to the silicon suppliers and then they can react, they can retune their process and then they can give a better product. And on top of that, then we will learn what defect matters most for, silic for solar cell. So once you created the R&D framework, then it's time for you to roll over to manufacturing. 
So that brings up to the next part, which is the challenges in scaling up R&D process, R&D product to manufacturing. R&D and manufacturing have uh, different various advantages, disadvantages, and also process different challenges. R&D, money, money is not a major focus. Uh, they can use any chemicals they want. They can use high-grade purity. They can have one technician that focus on one process step. And they can pay highly skilled technician. But manufacturing, on the other hand, money is their focus. They, because of that, because of the limitation, they are not able to assess any chemicals. And even one technician, the technician will have to work on multiple process. And on top of that, they have to pay a lower labor by hiring a lower pay operator. And in manufacturing, there will be multiple tools. And this multiple tool will have tool to tool variation, which means process vari variation is high, then you can have inconsistent in product. So for all R&D scientists and R&D engineers here, uh, you need to think ahead. Um, you need to think that if you create a product using the best scenario, but not thinking about the limitation what manufacturing have, then it will be difficult to roll over your product. So when you design a product, you have to make a process window large so that when it goes into the environment, it can be robust and your product can survive in the, in the manufacturing mode. Next, I'm gonna talk about what women experience being in high-tech, clean-tech work workforce. So this is my first-hand experience but I wanted to make sure, I wanted to clarify that what I say here, I am not making generalization of countries. I am referring to the sub-society who are still using the old template. So, <clears throat> um, so in the airport, I have, in the airport, somebody waiting with a sign, Mr. Othman. And then drive to the hotel, and when I arrive in the hotel, I look around, I can sense like, hmm, it seems like I'm a neighborhood that, have, that provide women's services. And then at night, I couldn't sleep, I go out, look down at the window, and I see a black car pull over, and then there are five escort women coming up from the car to the building. And I opened the drawer, I saw a Bible, and next to it, a fresh pack of condom. Of course, why not, right? It's a scientist coming to the high-tech industry. Don't bother to ask what's the gender. And sure, let Mr. Othman have the option if he wanted to. In business dinner, there's a round table, and then there are 18 males, two females. Um, and then, the waitress serve, they serve the man first, and then the man eat, and then they serve the second man, the second man eat, and then they will serve female the last. So I'm gonna bring one example that closer to me, um, Malaysia. In Malaysia, we have three major races, Malay, Chinese, India. Uh, scenario number one, a quality manager from Malaysia factory coming to the US for a training, I gave him a training. He is Chinese Malaysian. I am Malay Malaysian. And he said, Malay is stupid. I will never hire Malay. Scenario number two. I am friends with Chinese Malaysian. We are good friends. But they have to make a declare. Maslina, you are not Malay. So let's bring that scenario to female. A group of R&D professional males and two female. And that one female make a statement, I cannot work with female. Female boss is the worst. But Maslina, you are different, you are not female. <laughs> Next, they won't hear female. I am in charge of the technology. 
But every time when the supplier come, they will ask the technology question to my male teammate. My male teammate keep directing the question, please ask Maslina. We follow Maslina guidance. And then there is a supplier's product quality upset. And then I, re I generate the data. I said, this is not working. I'm going to put you inside engineering program. We're not going to order from you. But please follow this program so that we can improve. Um, and then the supplier email to my male teammate. What should we do next? And then my teammate email back and said, please follow Maslina guidance. <laughs> so they won't hear female, even though the female has credential. So solar cell. The size of solar cells matter. The larger solar cells, the more power you have. This is the opening slide they have. So what is the significance of this slide? Entertainment template. Uh, when traveling for a business, they typically have three major parts. Um, meetings, dinner, entertainment. Every slot is an opportunity for negotiation, something that you cannot get inside the meeting room because it tends to be inside the meeting, on-site meeting, they protect themselves, they protect their team. But when it's off-site, you can break the ice and you can move forward. So for me, every slot is opportunity. So I don't want to miss any of the slot. Uh, we have a technology upset. My teammate arrived earlier. They already had the business dinner, and then I came late, I joined them at entertainment slot. I come inside the room, they are all the male, and they are escort girls. So, uh, I have five females counterparts that I work with around the world. Three of them quit. They are young professional. I asked one of them, why do you quit? She looked down and she looked up at me and she said, Maslina, you see the environment. You know why I quit. My, my heart breaks. Um, recently, I gave a talk at Foothills College at Women in STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering and Math. They're a smart woman. They love science, they love engineering. The university are ready to teach them. When they graduate, they are ready to contribute to the society. But does the clean tech workforce ready to accept female in the organization? If there are still this sub-society, this part of society who are still practicing this old template, these are not conducive for women professional. With that, I conclude my talk. And it is everyone that is responsible to change the old template, to create environment that are conducive to women. I am urging women to stay in this industry, men to be supportive to another woman, and women to accept differences among other women. And as regard of technology transfer, when you R&D, scientists and engineers, when you design a product, think ahead. What needs to be changed right now so that your product can be transferred easily to manufacturing? Thank you.